we have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. First up for general information, Mr. Dwyer. Uh, Carlene Eddy was the first to join us. Carlene Eddy, you're up. Do you have gentlemen for questions? Yeah, let's see. I guess not. Uh, you're muted, Carl. Oh, okay. no, there you go. No, I don't. I don't have a question. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Andrew was the next one in. I don't have a question. Okay. This is Andrew Gnatic. He's uh, from Hadley. He's a student at Hampshire. Correct, Andrew? Yes, sir. Welcome to the audience. Thank you. Just, just trying uh, to figure out what goes on. Okay. Kevin O'Brien was next. All set, Bill. Just waiting for the meeting. Okay. Uh, Jude, uh, Judy's iPad was next. Bill Dwyer, it's John Rogers at Grand Oak. How are you? Oh, hi. Mm. Just I, fine. Well, I'm sitting here um, as, a, as a spokesperson for Grand Oak. And the only question we have is, is whether or not there's going to be a, uh, uh, a public meeting for Mr. Michelson tonight, or the, if there's going to be a continuance as a result of the mix-up of the dates. Me Mr. Mr. Michelson's actually expires in uh, on the 18th, two weeks from tonight, and he will more likely, more than likely, be requesting a continuance on that for that date. But we don't have a continuance date to that he will request what he's going to be looking for yet. We'll let you. We'll let Mr. Phil know when he does, and he can distribute that. So I can assume then, uh, Jim, that. Uh, based on the agenda tonight, let her see um, that there will be no discussion. That is correct. Yes. There will be, there'll be no you. discussion, but I think I actually had seen that there, I thought the dates were off a little bit. Let me uh, see if I can lay my hands on the minutes. He originally requested the 17th of May, and we continued the meeting continuance until the 4th, which was tonight. And then he came back and made it the 18th. Okay. Yeah. And I emailed him the other day and he said uh, he will be likely be re requesting a continuance again. Thank you for that information. Okay. If you want, um, if you want to give Mr. Dwa the planning at Halley MA your email. <clears throat> We'll include you on the date when it's continued too. I would be glad to do that. I would send it to the uh, planning board email then. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, then um, Jim Cunahan was next. <laughs> Can't hear you. Oh, okay. You, you have a bad audio connection. Yeah. It's all scrambled. So Jim, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute you as host and turn off your video and let you unmute and turn back on. Good evening, sir. Oh, Paul. So uh, we have heard that if you do not use your video, you may have better connectivity. So before you turn your video on, would you try it with just your voice? 
Okay. Yeah, hello. Hi, we're down to Paul's iPhone. Is that the same as Jim Cunahan? No. Yes. Okay. Sure. Jim Cunahan uh, is still there. Jim Cunahan is still there. Yep. He's here for the heirloom information when it comes time for the special mm -hmm. permit renewal. Okay. Um, Jim Cunahan, you may want to put your video on and, and, and mute and then call the phone number. Okay. And, and then, well, then let, you can speak him, over. Yeah, let him try to, he's here for a later meeting. He sent us a text, so okay. he, he has some time to uh, work through yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, and let's see, Kevin O'Brien's here for the other one. So uh, there's Paul. Yes, sir. Okay, you are up. Okay. Okay, so am I here? Yeah, I'm going to speak for Paul for the most part. So this is Paul Naris, owner of Exotic Auto on the corner of Russell Street and East Street. As we all know, the state is taking his whole parcel for the widening of Route 9 and he is looking for a place to move his shop to. And he has an opportunity to purchase 10 to 12 Russell Street, which is for an auto house owned by Jeremy Ober, uh, currently being utilized as a used car sales lot and uh, ambulance uh, storage facility. I don't know what, what you wanna call it. Anyhow, Paul's just here to, to uh, make sure that the change of ownership, uh, similar use will be allowed by the planning board. Okay, what's gonna to happen to the ambulance place? They're gonna be gone. Where are they going to? I have no idea. Okay, they still, so we don't know if they're still gonna serve Hadley or not? I don't know any of that, Jim. Um, okay. I can get a hold of the owner. He's, he was trying to get into the meeting as well, but he had a problem. <clears throat> so I, can, I can text him and find out if you'd like. Well, no, no, that we, that's, that's, for, that's neither here nor there as far as what we're going here. The only concern I have is if the, the, I was, went by the North Hadley garage site, the old North Hadley garage where he was permitted. I believe it was permitted for like 14 cars, something like that, 16 cars. I went by there today and there's at least 25 on the property, not including the two, the two vehicles that are parked for the house. So he is far in excess of what he was approved for there. Um, that's not a good thing. That's basically saying he's not complying with the site plan approval guidelines. So I'm hesitant to say anything about the Route 9 site because it's far more obvious and if he's not going to comply with North Hadley, that's out of the way and out of sight. Um, I mean, the one in North Hadley is 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 extremely crowded. It's jammed with cars and, and pickup trucks. They're parked everywhere. Okay, so um, Paul, I guess you need to respond to that because I can't do that for you. Well, you know the cars that uh, Mr. Jim uh, saw in the parking lot; those cars were finished, and customers were going to be picking it up this evening. So we have cars coming in and then we finish the cars and then by the end of the day, the cars are picked up and we make sure that the count of the cars remain according to the site plan that has been issued to us for how many cars are gonna be on the lot. By the end of the day, we make sure that th that many cars stay on the lot, but during the day, we have no control because we have customers coming in, in and out, in and out, and sometimes they pick up the cars at 6, 6.30. So, you know, we, we cannot control that, but we, we always try to follow the, the site plan that was issued to us by the town of Hadley. The, the site plan that you had did not have a time frame on it. The 14 or 16 cars, I don't remember the exact site, exact yeah. number was at any time of the day, any day of the week. It was not that you could put on at night, you were limited to that. Is that what you were supposed to have on the site at any time, period? Yes. And you're exceeding that by almost probably close to twice as many. 
No, no, not not twice to as many. I mean, we have we finish cars during the the, the daytime, and people finish their work at five five thirty, and they come pick up the cars at six six thirty. I mean, we cannot control that because the cars by end before we close, they are gone. But we'll make sure that if you are noticing that, and I will make sure that 16 cars stay out and no more than 16 at any given time or day or whatever. Night. I went by there today and there's about 25 cars on your property. So you're exceeding the 16 or whatever the number is by at least nine cars. I do understand that, sir, but the cars have been picked up. I will make sure from tomorrow that the cars are there 16, okay? No, that's not okay. You're not supposed to have more than 16 cars. Or, I'm not sure the exact number. We can look it up and verify that. Okay. At any point of the day, any day of the week, you're not supposed to have more than that many cars on your site. Okay, it's so we'll make a, sure. It's not limited to 5.30 at night. It's limited to 24 hours a day, seven okay. days a week. Okay, so we'll make sure that uh, if the cars are not being picked up uh, at 5.30 or after, we'll make sure that we put the cars inside the shop and we make sure that there are 16 cars, whatever cars are, have been allowed to us, we'll make sure we comply on that. You're not gonna see this again. That's my word. Okay, so if we can continue, yeah. we'll, we'll, you know, to have, Absolutely. To, do, to have to do this and hold another site over your head I don't like that. I like to have somebody simply complying with site plan approval without the planning board or the building inspector having to basically threaten you. That's, we don't want to do that. We want people to come, businesses to simply comply and everybody is good. So Jim, th this is not a th threatening thing. Okay, you're doing your job and I'm going to supposed to be doing my job. So being said that, I will make sure that if it is 16 cards, we're gonna have 16 cards from today onwards. You're not gonna have this problem again. And I don't like problems. I don't, do, I don't like to give problems to anybody. Okay. I'll make sure of that. Okay. Okay, and my apologies, okay, for that. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. We'll have plenty of time between now and the public, between now and the meeting as far as- uh, Of course. You know. So, so what, what, is, what are you requesting, Randy? So he wants to be able to move his operation from the corner of East Street and Russell Street to 10 to 12 Russell Street. Okay. Is the site plan that you showed us what we approved for Jeremy over? Yes. Exactly. Yes. That's I I, so what I'm what I'm assuming is it's a similar use, it's just a change of ownership, and that <coughs> excuse me, we don't. <coughs> need to reopen site plan approval, but that's, I guess, at your discretion. So the issue with Jeremy was that he was just going to do sales there and maybe some uh, detailing or something like that. And, but I think Paul wants to actually do repairs there. That is correct. So Jeremy had the his used car sales and the, uh, from what I understand, the, the right to repair his used cars, whatever that may entail, uh, but I'm not positive on that. So I did send around, I don't know if everyone got a chance to look at the site plan approval decision for, for an auto house. And I also sent around the plan that accompanied that. And I don't know if people had a chance to look at that. Yep. Want me to bring that up on the screen? Sure. Well, Randy. Would, yes, sir. What, what are you requesting? Are you requesting a new site plan or we go by the old site plan? I think we have, oh, to, we what have, what to, we have number... two members aboard and, and okay. we really have to address that as a new issue. All right. Well, what I, what I, what I really, what Paul needs to know is if, he will be allowed to move his business there in some way, shape, or form that is as close to what he's doing now as possible because it is his livelihood, which he is about to lose. Uh, if, if he, uh, you know, the state takes his property, they're busting him to 
close on this thing and and for whatever reason i don't understand but anyhow they're on his back to to sell the property and he's just trying to find a place to go he's been doing that for over a year and having not much luck so uh he's just trying to grab grab onto something that he can so he can keep his business going in a nutshell Without getting into too many details here, as far as the actual number of cards and stuff, what Paul would like to do is a permitted use and a permitted zone. So he'll be, my opinion, I don't see a problem with him moving there. We'll just have to iron out is the entire site plan approval uh, okay as is, or do we have to reopen to review some things? Because it has been a number of years. It hasn't been used as a used as a repair or a selling facility um, since the ambulance place has moved in there. It has, Jimmy. He he's been selling cars out of there. Oh, he has. Yeah, he's got. I mean, I've got a copy of his license from the selectman, and basically what they're saying is that because the ambulance was there, we're going to cut your number down in half while there's two businesses there. If there's only one business there, then you revert back to your, your 20 cars. Okay. So we did express a reservation about 20 cars in the uh, foreign auto house decision. Let me bring that up. Yeah. It, it, it seems awfully busy to put 20 cars on that small site. But again, we, we, we can look at that. So what we said was that um, <clears throat> the planning board reluctantly accepts the 20 car license issued by the board of selectmen, but considers oh. that number of cars excessive for the site. It will not agree in advance to any transfer of the license without a reduction in the number of authorized vehicles. Thank you, Bill. The problem, <laughs> Well, addressing Randy and Paul, as well as the new members, is the fact that the selectmen jumped the gun uh, before we had the site plan approval. So uh, that's why the, the higher number of cars was allowed. Now, on a similar, on a, this, I want to say a similar note, we do not want to put anybody out of business and put Mr. Paul at a great disadvantage here. So we want to negotiate the number of cars, but we want to be reasonable both from the size of the lot and something that he can reasonably live with that's not going to put him out either. Okay, so what I'm hearing is that the use would be allowed subject to uh, site plan negotiations or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I mean, basically the number of vehicles because it's a nice, a nice non-busy site right now and that there hasn't been a lot of cars on the site. Granted, he's going to be putting more cars on the site and that's understandable. He needs that to make, you know, his business work. We're not questioning that. We just want to make sure that the number of vehicles is reasonable from both points of view and something he can live with. Okay, so does, does that site have access to cross path road there? Yes, yes. So he, people can come leave his facility and go down cross path the cemetery and they don't have to worry about traffic patterns on Route 9, correct? That's right. That's the way the original site plan was set up, Mike, so that cars would not exit onto Route 9. They would go okay. on cross path okay. to, to get good. out of there. Um, so Jimmy, what uh, what's the the next step here? Do we do we have to have another public hearing, or do we uh, revise this one? I'm guessing we can amend this without a public hearing. Kid, what do you think, Mr. Dwyer? Uh, yeah, I think it's it's a close enough that it could be done as an amendment without reopening the public hearing. Okay, so do you know, he did a he did a Paul did a real nice job in North Hadley with. The, landscaping there 
along Clemens Road. Perhaps we could get a little more landscaping in here to well, make I it think, a little more. Yeah, I don't think Paul will have a problem doing that. Yeah. He likes to make things look nice. Yeah, so I, I sure. don't think you'll have an issue with that. Um, do you do you want to do it at I mean, is it something we do now or should we do it at another meeting? How about Miss how about if Paul goes back? I mean, I'm I'm thinking of number of, of reduction of cars of maybe like six. I'm gonna say five vehicles. Mm -hmm. What does the rest of the board think of that? So he cuts from 20 to 15 vehicles. That seemed reasonable. Uh, Paul, how many ve vehicles do you have on your current <laughs> property in any given day? I would say, sir, 15 would be ideal for me. I can handle 15, okay. sir. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, so we're not I, making I any think we have to have a, uh, probably a new meeting, just so he could lay out exactly where the cars are going to be parked. We can see his new potential layout and in that way, uh, we'll feel more comfortable. Uh, uh, Bill, Mr. 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 Zagrodnik. Yes. I'm not looking to make a decision tonight. Okay, that's what I, I want him to go away. I want Randy to go away and Paul to go away tonight with an idea of what to plan for so they can recome back with a layout with the number of vehicle, vehicles. I don't want to say, I don't want to leave it up to them. I want to give them an idea of what we're looking to reduce to. Okay. Okay. Maybe in two weeks from tonight. Okay. That'll that also give reasonable. them a chance. That'll give them a chance to do something with this and also to make sure North Hadley stays in compliance with the original. That sounds fair enough to me. Paul, yeah. you okay with that? Absolutely. Yeah. It's all good now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I don't I yeah, I don't want to try to do anything on the fly here. Um uh, like to get it right. Let me just read you the language of the restriction on uh uh, on the um, on the North Hadley, just so we're all clear as to what yes. that was. Um, and so, and, and exotic, and that was the amended. So the uh, limitation for exotic at the North Hadley location uh, was not to exceed a total of 10 cars for sale and slash or awaiting repairs and not to exceed two employee and four customer parking spaces. Okay, so that was a total 16. of 16. 16 total, okay. Okay. All right, so that's understood. And okay. we will, Paul and I will get together and go over this site plan and figure out where to cut some cars out and what makes sense. And we'll be back in two weeks. How's that sound? That's yeah, Randy, if, if you're coming back in two weeks, I remember we had a similar scenario with the North Hadley garage where you came back and then all of a sudden there was a, a lot of renovations, you know, including the tower and the color, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, <laughs> Is he planning to leave that building the way it is, or is he planning to have a new, uh, a new type of building there? So that that probably should be involved. That's too. true, because that's a low building. Yes. At cross path. Yes. All right. Well, we'll look at that to make sure there's no issues. If there, by chance, and I don't think his intent is to alter the building, but if that were become necessary, then obviously that's a whole different animal. And right. then we, we've got to have a, a, a new. Uh, but it's a good, but it's a good point. If something needs to be done, let's get it out, get, get it out now so yeah. that okay. there's no down the road. Oh, by right. the way. We'll make sure that we can, we'll get in the building, make sure that it, the lifts will work and there's enough ceiling height, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Okay. Very good. Randy. Right, great. Has, Thank you, guys. Uh, Thank you. Just, just from a curiosity point of view, uh, has the state negotiating a price for the land or are they just going to kick him out and then negotiate a price or are they negotiating now? No, they've told him what they're going to give him, which is ridiculous in my opinion, but they're, they're not budging. 
Okay. Well, you know, it's it's not just the value of the land that they're taking; it's the it's the value of the business. And I hope he's got good legal counsel on this. No, one. no, nobody disagreeing that Paul's getting the short end of the stick on this one. Yeah, not. for sure. So, anyhow, no. all right, we'll we'll, getting... we'll figure it out and we'll go from there. Okay. All right. Thank you. I've got one more thing before you kick me out, if if I'm allowed. All right. Well, that would be because I believe you are next then for administrative affairs. All right. So I have an A&R plan on 54 Huntington Road owned by Nancy Nabala. Uh, it's essentially an L-shaped piece of property that uh, 125 foot wide strip goes behind five of her abutters to the west, so towards the Connecticut River. Uh, and one of her abutters is Mark Washkevitz, and he is going to buy that piece behind all the neighbors from her. She is going to retain the house lot, which has 200 feet of frontage and more than, I'll wait for Bill. Are we seeing that? We're just seeing your file manager. Okay. We're seeing all your bank account numbers, Bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I have to write them down. We <laughs> can't remember them. Um, all those offshore accounts. So let's uh, let's get it. Try Who, to get into it a different way. Who's this going to go to again? Uh, Peter Washkevitz. Where does he live? He is. If you're coming up Huntington, you pass uh, the oh, wow. solar field, and then there's a, a swampy area, a wooded swampy area, and he's yep. the first house on the left after that. So okay. parcel A is going to be conveyed to Peter Wischkevitz? Yes. Okay. Have we seen that plan? I don't recall seeing it. I, uh, yeah, it went around, but... Uh, Monday, it went, out, it went around on Monday. Oh, wait a minute. It went to you. And it went me. to you and me, but I don't, I don't think you say it to anybody else. No. All right. Well, if Bill can get it on the screen, which I see it. So, yeah. Brand, a, a, a question there as you proceed, you know, over the rise, past the uh, solar field, past the swampy area, there is a right of way going to the fields to the north. That was a controversy in the past that the, the person that bought that house, evidently where Peter lives now, claims that there was uh, no legitimate right away. It went to court and uh, the judge says you cannot really landlock a farmer's land. Yeah. And uh, is that right away shown on the land? Well, there... I don't think I show it specifically on my plan, but I refer to a, another plan that it is shown on. And that, according to the law, is puts everybody on notice to look at that plan. So it is out in the public eye. Um, Carl's owns that piece now behind, it used to be Pipchinski's and Carl's owns it now. So I don't know, I doubt they're gonna farm it. I doubt they need to access it that way, but they, the right of way was still, is still there. Good explanation, thank you. We actually, that's the right of way to 13 acres we have out there. And I know there was talk about solar on Carl, so that is you know, a, right, a right of way that um, they may you know, access at some point. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, did that get it up? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the, there are two parcels shown, revised lot three and parcel A. So revised lot three is 54 Huntington Road. That's Nancy Nabala's house. It has 200 feet of frontage and 70,000 square feet. The 150 foot square will fit in the lot without problem. So that's a freestanding lot by itself. And then the Parcel A, 2.2678 acres, is a not a separate building lot to be conveyed to Peter Waskevitz 
and that's that. Everything complies that needs to. What's Nancy's street address? Oh, says 54? 54, yeah. So Randy, there was some construction that went on in that house. So it used to be a very tiny house. Uh, uh, is there an additional house there or just an addition to that small house? There's an addition on that house, which is reflected in the house you see on the plan. Okay. Is that where Mark and your ball lived? Yes. Yep. So where would the right of way so it's not on this plan. All right. So I'll try to describe this in a in the easiest way possible, Mark. Uh, are you good with Northwest? I am. Okay. So in the northwest corner of parcel A, basically diagonally across that northwest corner was a, must have been a farm road or something like that. I don't believe it's still visible today, but it was there at one point. So it would go basically from the westerly abutter, which says now we're formerly Nancy Nabala and across into Carl's. And maybe it went across, when I saw it on the, the plan I referred to, it only showed it in that Northwest corner. It did not show it going across Peter Waskevitz's land, uh, but I will certainly make him aware that it's potentially there. Okay. Thank you, Randy. Mm-hmm. Looks like there's some writing there now, Randy. I can't can't see it. Uh, no, I think it's just the meets and bounds. It meets and bounds, and then there's a boundary line. Okay. That makes it any better. It does. It does, but it's still. Well, there's you must you must have dirt on your screen, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> well, it it certainly helps. <laughs> Mr. Iser, you are out of order. Not at all. It is a possibility. <laughs> it's going to be conveyed to Mr. Roshkevitz for Peter and Peter and or whatever. Yeah, his wife. And uh, so the plan complies in that in that sense. Is that a correct statement, Mr. Dwyer? Yep, I think we, we're good. Bill, you're sharing all your secrets. Uh, no, well, this is my planning board email. Okay. So uh, I'm actually just going to head to the, uh, the next one I wanted to bring up, but won't worry about that. Make a motion to sign a plan. Second. Any other dis uh, yeah, any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any, anybody opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. All right. Who's, I'll, who is the second on that? Mike. Mike. Me. I'll get together with either Jim or Bill to get the plan signed. Okay. So okay. Yeah, while you while you're bringing plans around, um, <clears throat> I did get an email from the attorney on um, the, the lighting at the night's in and he sent us those pictures of the lights turned out some of them turned out mike did you get any more feedback from your neighbor no i didn't no i didn't so i guess we can move forward okay oh i'm 206 russell okay so when you whoever you go to uh get the plan signed, bring both. Okay, I will do that. Thank you. Very good. Okay, that's all yeah. I have this evening. Thank you. Okay, we'll open the public hearing now for the various things. The Hadley Planning Board will conduct Zoom public hearings on Tuesday, May 4th, 2021, beginning at 6.45 p.m. Purpose of the hearings are to review proposed amendments to the Hadley Zoning Bylaw. Number one, amend the zone bylaw by adding a new section 1.2 definitions. Number two, amend sections 25 and 27 by adding verbiage to permit payments into the Hadley Affordable Trust Fund. And number three amendment, 
amend section 13 to comply with the latest MS4 regulations, including section 13.7 to allow seasonal RV placement along the Connecticut Riverbank. And the other public hearing is to uh, review the application of the one year renewal application for heirloom collection according to the zone bylaw section 30.4.5.7, which requires annual review for several years, um, looking for any concerns. Um, so we'll take the first one, definitions. That was the one we've, actually number one and number two were the ones, or similar almost to number two, were the ones that were at the fall town meeting and the meeting was adjourned for lack of a quorum before we could get to them. So the definitions are basically almost unchanged. We put a few little minor additions in and some changes, but they're, I'd say 99% of what we saw at the fall town meeting. Right, and it's, it's not a big surprise. We're basically, we're trying to consolidate a definition section and largely pulling them out of various sections and putting them all in, in one place. Yeah, there are some added definitions that were never defined well. And this is something that he, even going back to Tim Nyhart, he had been eager to get a definitions of certain things in and to consolidate them to make it easier in his own bylaw instead of looking all over the place and because they were all scattered throughout the 30 some odd sections right now. And it's, it, you're right, it's basically a consolidation and some clarifications of others. A good one to bring up, Jim, as an example, is the definition of height. Building height, right? Right. Yeah, that, that's a good one. The, the, the building code defines height as one thing. We had always been defining it as something different. And this simply puts it in writing to the way the, the planning board and essentially the building inspector had been in, uh, defining it. So now it's in black and white. Some definitions are a little bit different than a building code, but at least they're there. So if there's, you know, discrepancies, you go by the Hadley Zone bylaw definition. I will make a motion to recommend approval of the definitions article. I would second that. You have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Any discussion for no. all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Number two, that's the one where we are putting into the regulations that right now, if the uh, uh, affordable housing trust fund was created a year ago at the annual town meeting, and when you need to comply with the inclusionary zoning, right now you've got to basically put them on site or off-site. Um, this allows a developer a third option. You can still do either one of those two. You can also donate a sum of money to the Affordable Housing Trust um, because sometimes complying with, prop with properties on-site or off-site can be a very uh, cumbersome deal for the developer and they would rather donate to a fund and be done with it and let Hadley deal accordingly with the fund down a road to make affordable housing, however they may do it. So the housing trust fund exists, but the means to donate into it did not exist, do not exist yet. Can I nitpick, Jim? Sure. Is donate the right word since they're gonna be required it is not required. You, it is an option of three. You have three choices. Donate to the fund, put the housing on the, in the development, or putting the housing in, in some place else you may own off-site. So it is not a requirement that you donate, that you put money into this fund. You have three choices. Um, what's his name that did the uh, retrofit of the old shady lawn? Jolinas was going to put uh, an apartment someplace else that he owned into the affordable funds. Now that this be an option, you know, he may decide 
no, I want to, uh, I'm going to donate, I'm going to put money into the fund instead. That'll be the developer's yeah. option. One of the big issues too was purchasing versus renting. When you're renting, the variables are more limited. When you're purchasing, there are just too many variables to try to figure out. Oh yeah, you, you're right. When you're almost when you're, impossible. <laughs> when you rent a property, it is a bit, it is, from what the developers have told us, it's much easier to comply with a uh, affordable rent as opposed to an affordable house purchase. Exactly. And the the research is a bit a lot more, and I'm not I I, I can't I don't understand it, so I'm not even going to try to explain it. Exactly. Well, one for instance, one variable is the the mortgage interest rate, somebody might be able to afford to buy something and qualify with all the income ratios when the rate is two and a half percent. But if it goes up to three, yeah, boom, I mean, you know, yeah, I, I don't understand it, so I'm not going to try to get yeah. into it. Well, I, I just thought I'd throw that out. Yeah. Any other comments on this one? If not, Mr. I Dwyer. make a motion to recommend approval. I'll second it. Okay. Any other? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. And then the third regulation is the MS4, and that's the one with the section 13.7, which probably sees the biggest amendment regarding allowing seasonal seasonal. RV placement along the Connecticut River. That's one we've worked on quite a bit with input from various people when the time came up. So any comments on this one? Yes, please. Tell me how it is different, how it's going to be different from the current bylaw that allows uh, recreational vehicles in the floodplain. And I'm concerned how this is gonna come up at town meeting. So I just wanna, I wanna understand the difference so that okay. when, when the war breaks out. Under the existing regulation, under the existing bylaw, the there's basically one RV permitted per basically building lot size. So if you want to put two campers on your property, you basically need I believe it's like 60,000 square feet. Right now, under the, and if you want to put three, obviously you need 90 and so on and so forth. If you, under the new regulations, it is 2,500 square feet of property per camper. Campers must be placed, I believe it's 25 feet apart. There is a annual fee that you will, there's no, there's no special permit under the, under the existing bylaw. You need a special permit from the ZBA to do this. Under the new bylaw, there's no special permit required from the ZBA or the planning board. There's no special permits. The only thing that you, but you must comply with the conservation commission. The um, build, there is a building code on different things on uh, RBs and placement. Is that right, Tom? Okay, and you got to comply with the uh, fire code as far as you know, making sure your propane tanks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, complying with the building code, the conservation, and the fire exist today. Those are not new; they just never were exactly heavily enforced. However, none of those items are new, but they are going to be enforced. So, and in that sense, they're going to be a little bit different than the way things have been done in the past. The big change is no special permit. Um, and if you want to put on, if you've got the space, uh, there's no minimum frontage, but there will be setbacks based on conservation rules and wetlands and floodplains and stuff like that from, from the Conservation Commission. So those are the big ones. It is from a zoning bylaw point of view, much more lenient. Okay. But if you're over three RVs, then certain other right. If you're over, kick if you're in, over three well, RVs, then the, the board of health also kicks in. Yeah. But again, none of those are different 
than no, what they're the always laws, there. Correct. Those are not new laws. Those have been those are laws or rules that have been on the books for a long time. But like I said, they were not heavily enforced. Now exactly. they're going to be. Exactly. Um, a, lot, a lot of this is coming from the state that they want the town to start enforcing these things. Exactly. Okay. Oh, right. we, do, we do have an existing floodplain overlay district that was uh, adopted in response to a request from Boston that all communities with floodplains <clears throat> impose development restrictions in the floodplain. Um, so probably three quarters or uh, well, five sixths of what we're adopting are technical changes to the existing bylaw. And it is only the uh, RVs by the river section that really breaks new ground and it, it does it in a way that makes uh, use more friendly from a zoning perspective. And uh, I can't emphasize enough what uh, Jim uh, said, the, the rules that people are most directly affected by have always been in effect. They just haven't been enforced. Uh, I'll also add that if for any reason this bylaw should fail to pass, we are then the existing bylaw remains in effect with the one camper per lot limit and a special permit from the ZBA. Okay, so, uh, that's a good point to make. All right, yeah. is does, does the do you guys anticipate trying to sell that point at town meeting? Oh yeah, yes, yeah. will make. Oh. That's a good point. That was the one point I forgot to mention. That if we if this doesn't pass, it's going to revert back to the old one, right? Or the existing so, one, rather. Yeah, and, and so uh, basically, there's no public hearing with the planning board. The biggest hurdle is, in, as I see it, is going to be with the concom. Right. Yes. Okay. But, but that's not on. That's not up for a vote. Right. Now I understand that. Okay. Yeah. I get that. The, the, the biggest point we're going to have to make here, the, we we got to. I will. You'll see me beating at home that these rules are the same whether it's with or without this bylaw. They're going to have to comply, and you know it, it's that's just the way it is. The biggest difference is. It's easier from a zoning point of view with this new revised bylaw. Okay. I we are getting we are getting out of the way and we're taking yeah. the ZBA with us out of the way. Yeah. When when we started hearing all of the other things that the that the campers need to comply with because of location to the river, the zone bylaw isn't getting us much of anything. Okay. So, my, my recollection is, and I'll double check the dates, but um, we initially adopted the floodplain overlay district with the provision for campers by the river before the state enacted the Rivers Act. So at that time, no one was really paying attention to what was going on. So at that point, we did create a system. Okay, we'll, we'll give, you, give you a structure. Um, it didn't work out as we might have hoped, and we're taking this chance to um, streamline it. Okay, great. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Jim, yeah. is the frontage, uh, did we put that provision in frontage on the river? Pardon? Remember you were saying the campers must have some frontage on the river rather than a, on a road? Yeah, the original one requires frontage on the river. The existing one, the new, the revised amendment does not. But it does require them to space out the... But you're going to have so many square feet and so much distance between campers. So there is, it, it's, it's, it is, you're going to have some provision there for having space. Yeah, and there's no requirement that you're going to have frontage on the river. Right, you could stack them away from the... Yeah, you could have some, you could put a camper, you could put a camper, you know, okay. somebody I, could have a lot on the river. You could put something behind it. Okay. Yeah. Could I just, 
it does provide that but it has to be a lot with frontage on the river. Oh, that does, okay. Yeah. All right. That, that makes sense because all of a sudden it could be Camp Central down there. Yeah, okay. Away from the river. Just as a curiosity, in, the, in these discussions, we were told that in Hatfield and Northampton, people have uh, campers along the river, especially Hatfield. No. And Hatfield, that, that, and Hatfield that, doesn't have a bylaw addressing this. Yes, they do, Michael, and that is true. Oh. I uh, actually own nine parcels there, and it starts from the center of town. I can walk for about two miles, and there is not two miles, four miles, five miles along the dike there, and there are no campers along those sites. But then you're going to hit a spot where there's a dozen of them, Joe. That's right. That's all the way down towards the uh, towards where the Mill River enters. So that was my point. Yeah. Part of there's it. no there's no bylaw on Hatfield addressing this issue. I'm just curious. Well, you have to ask Hatfield, and if they don't want to enforce it, that's their. That's so their... as a landowner, you can go to the town meeting and complain. So I did reach out to Northampton's zoning director and asked if they had a bylaw about campers on the river. And they said they do not allow campers on the river. Now that was from the uh, zo uh, whatever, uh, I forget what they call it now, but it's their- The planning and sustainability director. Planning and sustainability director. Yeah, well, um, they, they, the they, there fact- is there is a few tents and camps along the river in Northampton. We all but know. It, again, it, it comes down to enforcement. They don't right. have a bylaw. Yeah. Yeah. But they're not enforcing. Uh, they're not enforcing it. Uh, right. We have a more. We have a different situation because of the layout and especially the slope of fields to the river in various areas. Uh -huh. They're a more desirable location, and that impact shows, and that's why people are yeah. taking it seriously now. So we're trying to give something that the building inspector can enforce without killing himself or getting <laughs> getting getting beat up too much. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any I'm other discussion? If I could interject a comment. Sure. Hi, how you doing? Uh, my name is Gerald Trey. I'm uh, uh, helping uh, Lionel to forge um, on his property, which is just uh, adjacent to uh, Mitch's, just north of Mitch's. You know, it's close to five acres there. We just got the approval from the Conservation Commission last week, unanimous approval for seven RVs, up to seven RVs on that five acre piece. They'll have um, uh, roughly 100 foot of river frontage per RV. And this is by the Conservation Commission, uh, well, notice of intent. Uh, it, was, it was a lot of work. Uh, they worked with us, and um, we managed to uh, to do that. There was there was a variety of reasons why it went through. One of them was we were able to demonstrate that uh, there's been up to half a dozen to eight campers there for the past 40 years. It was one of the one of the uh, one of the prongs that we argued. The other one was uh, accessibility. The other one was uh, what was feasible and uh, and mitigation also. And, uh, Hong Kong came out. They came out to the property. I uh, looked at it. We mitigated a lot of the uh, things that were there, and um, ultimately we got a unanimous approval just a week ago. So, I mean, I guess my point is that it, it is very tough to get through the conservation commission, and um, uh, we we got through that hurdle and uh, never put more than seven there. And um, so as far as the town uh, uh, being relaxed in their bylaw a little bit, um, I don't see that as, as a danger, as long as um, everybody complies. No, you know, it wasn't enforced, people didn't comply. And uh, in past meetings, uh, there's been a scheme laid out for, for permitting and feet between campers and, and that kind of thing. So, um, uh, the conservation anyways, yes, go ahead. Did the Conservation Commission tell you that if you have more than three campers, that you you qualify you qualify as a camp site and you must conform with the Board of Health regulations, State Board of Health regulations? No, which which we which we plan on doing. Um, but no, we they didn't get into that. They're all about you know, endangered species, wetlands, riverfront. 
from the conservation uh, point of view. In other words, I suspect that the building inspector is going to have a checklist. And that's that's the correct. There is going to be the zoning enforcement officer. That's and correct. And the checklist will say, before you can put the camper down, you have to have this done, this done, this done. Yep. This done. Yep. Yep. Right. So we're all, we're all good with that. It's okay. fair, Joe. Tom, Tom, Tom is on it. Okay, I, I knew he would be. Thank you. Okay. Any how, many, how many other groups are petitioning the conservation? There's one other down? notice. There's one other notice of intent that's under consideration right now. That's the only other one I know of. And how many campers would that be? Uh, four, I believe. Okay, thanks. And Blake, they, they published the a legal, legal notice, a page full of legal notices. Yeah. Look at the legal notices in the Gazette over the last two weeks. Have the Conservation Commission. All, all um, I know is what notices of intent were filed as of last week. So I don't know. Yeah. There's probably, I would guess, at least a dozen, Bill. Yeah. Yeah. So there's quite a few. Doesn't mean they'll all get approved either. No, no. But I'm just saying there's a lot of hearings and a lot, there, there's a lot of activity on the as far as these RVs go or campers go, oh, okay. conservation, a lot of public well, hearings. So finally, it'll be all done right. So yeah, yeah. That the difference is that people, some people did get special permits from the ZBA, hmm. uh, but it was a fraction of what is out there now it was probably it, that was early and there were relatively few campers down there so the people who were tuned in got their uh, special permit uh people who came in later didn't even know about it and no one was telling them about it so uh, the fact that people are lining up with the conservation commission and that's that's encouraging it, it's yeah a much simpler process than getting a special permit. Right. Believe it or not. Any uh, other comments? Thanks for the uh, update. That's great. Um, Tommy, will Thank they you. have to display their approved permit on their on their RV or you know so that you you can drive through and see who's approved and and who's not or no, we're just going to have a file on it. They you know there's a whole checklist that we our committees come up with and and um, they have to show everything in a plan and all, but um, we, we haven't come up. We do have a permit that we made up uh, from the state, but they, we didn't say anything about having to post it. I will make a motion to recommend. I would second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. And the last public hearing was the review of the yeah, annual review, permit review of heirloom collection that was posted in the Gazette. And I sent out the notices, uh, the, the information to the various town boards that would be associated with this. And there had been no complaints regarding heirloom, con complaints or concerns regarding heirloom collection. Um, Mr. Jim, I believe you're here for that. Do you have comments on that? You're muted. Unmute yourself. Yeah, his phone shows as muted too. I don't know if that's something you can do on your smartphone. Can you unmute his phone, uh, Bill? I could ask to unmute. Can you hear yeah. me now? Yes. Yeah. It's fine. I was able to unmute. When I unmute on the computer, it's giving me feedback on the phone. Okay. Well, you're. Jeff, I apologize. I've been on Zoom all day without issues. Um, I don't have a statement. I'm just here to answer any questions and appreciate the board's time. And I apologize for the technical difficulties. So, do we have anyone who has any concerns to express? No. Everybody appears to be muted. No, I have. Uh... As, as the keeper of the planning board email, I have received no notification of any objection. No. What would some of the uh, objections be, Jim? Uh, or oh, 
Bill. I don't know. Uh, I was, you know, traffic, noise, um, people milling around the building too frequently, too many, just Moral basically, hazard. you know, the, the, not, not so much the, I don't think it would be a complaint about, per, per se, about the marijuana as opposed to the people and the way they conduct themselves as customers. Like okay. they opened in Northampton and they were the only one, it was a zoo. You know, um, but the fire department, the, uh, and police department both reported no issues. The okay. town clerk did not report that the, she has received any complaints about the place. I mean, those are the ones that somebody's gonna go to. Nobody on the board of selectmen responded because the town administrator also received a, the notice. So that's fair enough. These are good. Yep. Thank you. The only thing we have to go, we've got to go back to uh, Alan, I mean, Al Albano, and just get a filing fee out of him for that. That's all $300. Understood. Okay. The, the, the normal filing fee is $350, but because we combined your notice and the notices for the uh, zoning, we saved a little bit, little bit of money. As you're probably aware, recently advertisements in the Gazette have gone out of sight and legal notices follow that route. We used to put a legal notice in the Gazette for about 160 bucks. Now they're up to 350, 340. So um, this particular notice in the Gazette was $708. So we're going to hit you for $300 of it, which seems to me to be fair. Agreed. So I'll, I'll get a hold of Al just to get a, how we want to get, get that paid. That's all. Um, I do, do we need, we need some kind of a motion, don't we, Bill? But I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, hearing no concerns, should we make a motion to, uh, what are we doing? We're renewing their permit? Yeah. Yeah. I'll make a motion to find that there have been, uh, there have been no concerns and that, uh, and to renew. And what's the term, how many years on, on the renewal? I think, I believe it's a year for the first another, renewal. It's another year, yeah, one year. And then after that, I believe it's- Three, maybe? I believe it's three, and then after that, it's no longer. Okay. After the, after the three-year renewal is up, then it's, they're good. No renewals after that. So I'll make a motion to find that there have been no concerns raised and to renew for one year. I'll second that. Okay, and that would expire on when, Bill? Uh, so the bylaw actually talks about renewing yeah, I know. January or February. So let's just, uh, 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 I will make the renewal retroactive to, let me pull up that section of the bylaw. Just so Mr. Jim will know when to notify whatever it's gonna to be to renew it against, we all, there'll be no, we're not sure, that's all. Understood. Uh, so did, the you, you, your last name, Cunahan? Yes. Okay. I don't want to mispronounce it. That's all. Thank you. Appreciate it. It seems like my mic is working now. <laughs> yes. yeah. so I think I was dialed in, so that was giving the feedback. The permit application period for renewal shall be between January 1 and February 28th of each year. So I will, just so we're all covered, I will uh, make it uh, the motion for renewal retroactive to what well, I call it February 1. Okay. So in February, somewhere probably in uh, January of 2022, you'll need to just, just ask us to do this again. Understood, yes. Okay. Yeah, actually, let me do it to February 28th. Then there'll be time for them to initiate and get through the process. Right? Okay. Right. That's fine. Thank you. 
Okay, so the motion is to, to find that there have been no concerns raised and to renew for one year retroactive to February 28, 2021. Okay, I'll second that, Bill. Motion and second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Good luck. Thank you for being a good neighbor, Mr. Cunahan. Yes, thank you to the town of Hadley for being a good partner. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great evening, gentlemen. Are we getting any? How much? How many taxes have you given us so far? <laughs> it's funny, Les. So just for the month of April, I believe that the sales tax will be about sixty-six thousand dollars. Whoa! Mm -hmm. Is business good? You know, like everyone, we've been hurt by COVID, but it's slowly starting to ramp up. I mean, with, with all things considered, is it good? With all things considered, yes. Okay. But COVID. I, know, I would say if things were normal, you'd probably be booming, but right. But, but everyone's feeling the pain right now, so. Yeah. Okay. You've got, you've got good visibility there. I don't know if they can take the bus to see you, but they can find you easily. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate your time. Yeah. Okay. Um... Did you get the uh, Gazette bill that I sent you, Jim? I couldn't yeah, tell. Is, I'm trying to think. Three twenty-four eighty-six. This is for the. That has already been submitted for payment. We approved that at our last meeting, if I remember. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Yeah. No, we we do need to pay. You gave me one for uh, PVPC. Where is that one? Uh, let's see. I think they emailed that to you and to me. Yeah, I'm looking for what it was. Yeah, I double checked. It was uh, we did pay the Gazette three twenty four eighty six. So okay. Well, here we go. Uh, yeah. Okay. We got a, We did receive an invoice from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission for two thousand nine hundred five dollars and thirty three cents. <coughs> I'll entertain a motion to pay that invoice. And that was mostly for Ken's time. Pardon? That was yes. mostly. Yeah. yeah. I'll make that motion. Uh, I'll second. The motion and a second. Any other discussion? What was the amount again? Two thousand nine oh five point three three. Three three. Pardon? Put point three three. Yep. Yeah. Two oh nine two nine oh five point three three. Okay. That is for the time through through the end of April. Oh, wait a minute. How are we doing on our annual budget with them? Yeah, through the end of March. Yeah, through the end of March. For the first quarter, first quarter. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Jim, how are we doing on our PDPA, uh, PDPC? budget for the year on the what on our pvpc budget 
we're within our budget within well, we're, well, the, the, the uh seventy five hundred dollars we stay within that budget yeah yeah if we ever go over it's really usually by peanuts because all the ms4 work that is being done by pvpc is coming out of a separate fund from the board of selectmen we had a meeting last week with uh we went over the I think there's 16 pages, no, 30 pages of the regulation for MS4 for the planning board. And I think we went over just about three, two thirds of them. So we're supposed to finish that up tomorrow, I believe it is. And then we'll get them out to uh, Patty from PVPC will go over the minor changes and get them to me or to Bill, and I'll send them out to everybody for a review when we'll schedule a public hearing on them. Because all we need is a public, the way the, 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 the way the regulations work from Mike and Mark is they're adopted by the planning board. So we conduct a public hearing by publishing them the notice that we're going to have a public hearing, notice in the Gazette that we are going to have a public hearing to adopt the regulations. Anybody that wants a copy, can email Bill, he'll email them a copy. We hold the public hearing. If there's any changes, we make them and then we adopt them and they're effective basically immediately. And is that a June 2021 deadline or did that get extended or? Uh, we'll be within that timeline, yeah. And, and, and obviously this is not something that needs to go to town meeting. So. Yeah, All right. I mean, if we miss the 2020, if we miss the June, you're going to be by the end of June. Um, we'll probably, we probably, we should be able to make that. Yeah. But it's, it's not the regulations that are the problem, it's the bylaw. Mm -hmm. The bylaw has already been adopted and the, the regulations are kind of secondary and they a little bit secondary, but they still need to be done. Thank you. Um, do you have anything else, Mr. Dwyer? Uh, I do not believe that I do tonight. Okay. Town meeting is when, Randy? The 22nd. Okay, 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Saturday, the 22nd, 1 p.m. at Hopkins. Outdoors. Okay, out, outdoors like last time? Yes, sir. Okay. One of my uh, stepson and his wife are going to be up here. I'm going to bring him, bring him to the town meeting so they can see how uh, we civilized people do it. <laughs> they're going to think you're awesome. Uh, they're going to think we're screwed up. It's right. The first time I brought Adriana to one, she said, if this were in Bogota, five people would have been shot already. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have anything? <clears throat> No. Motion to adjourn. No moved. No move. Second. And a, sec and a second. Mike. All in favor? All right. Come on over. We'll go to Joe Zeke. Okay. Well, I gotta get you sauerkraut, Mike. I still got my refrigerator. Motion. Uh, yeah. Aye. Mo mo to adjourn. Aye. 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 Meeting Aye. is meeting is adjourned. Meeting is history. Thank you and thank you, John. Thanks, John. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, all.